Hey, what's up YouTube, it's ICU. And in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to downgrade iOS 13.3 back to iOS 13.2.3, all in the name of being able to jailbreak because iOS 13.2.3 actually has two key kernel vulnerabilities that are closed by Apple's latest 13.3 release. And those vulnerabilities will inevitably be exploited, which in turn will lead to a jailbreak, not only a jailbreak, but a semi-untethered jailbreak, which means you'll be able to jailbreak without a computer on device for all devices, not just the iPhone 10 and lower, which will include Apple's newer A12 and A13 powered ones like this iPhone 11 Pro Max right here. There's no denying that the best possible firmware to be on is iOS 13.2.3 or of course lower. It's always best policy to stay as low as you possibly can because we just don't know when new exploits are going to drop. We do however know that 13.1.3 and lower also have extra kernel vulnerabilities. So if you're there, definitely do not update. But the choice of whether you want to update if you are on an even higher firmware like iOS 13.2, which closes those sub 13.1.3 vulnerabilities is entirely up to you. However, like I said, it's always best policy to stay as low as possible. This is mostly for people who are on iOS 13.3 as of recording this video, but it will also work for updating as well. The exact same steps you're going to take to down grade will also work for updating from iOS 13.2 or higher to 13.2.3. Now, I must also say that this is very time sensitive. So before you watch any further, check down below in the comment section. I'm actually going to have a pinned comment concerning whether iOS 13.2.3 is still being signed by Apple because believe it or not, once Apple stops signing iOS 13.2.3, it will no longer be possible to downgrade. Now, it's imperative to just reiterate that once more. Downgrades are only possible if Apple is still signing the target firmware, being iOS 13.2.3, because of a number of security checks that Finder on macOS and iTunes on Windows perform when restoring a device, Apple has to give the quote go ahead, so to speak, on their end before the downgrade initiates. In other words, this guide will expire and it will no longer be possible to downgrade once Apple stops signing iOS 13.2.3. It's only a matter of time. It's not a question of if, but rather when. So definitely check there. There are also going to be a couple of other places that you'll be able to check as well in the resources that are linked down below in the description. But as long as that comment says it's possible, then you know you will be able to downgrade back to 13.2.3 to better ensure your ability to be able to jailbreak. So we're going to go ahead and get started. All we really need is a computer. It can actually be Mac or Windows. It really doesn't matter. So unlike CheckRain, which is currently Mac OS exclusive, you'll be able to downgrade if you do have a Windows computer. I'm going to show you guys the steps for both. They're nearly identical with one little caveat that I'll mention when we get there. But all you need is your device, a USB cable, and a computer. If you don't have a computer, you can borrow a friend's. It doesn't even have to be your personal computer. You just need a computer for the downgrade process process and it doesn't take long at all, maybe 20 minutes tops. So once you do have your device, a computer and a cable, just connect your device to your computer via that USB cable and also navigate to the link that's down below in the description, the very first one. Before I show you what you need to download and how to get into these steps, I want to also show you guys inside of settings general about that this iPhone is in fact running iOS 13.3 and we're going to go back to iOS 13.2.3. And as one final and very important note concerning your data, not all data will remain on your device when going back to iOS 13.2.3. This is a deterrent measure implemented by Apple to prevent people from downgrading. So anything that's not saved in iCloud is subject to be lost. So I, of course, suggest enabling messages in iCloud, iCloud photo library, and other iCloud services before the downgrade process. Also, you need to create a backup as well, which I'll show you guys in just a second prior to downgrading just to be safe in case not all of your data is saved and you don't have it saved inside of iCloud, then you can create that backup. 
So once you navigate to that link below in the description, it's just a post on Best Tech Info that contains written form of everything I'm talking about today and all of these steps. I want you guys to scroll down to where you see download iOS 13.2.3 IPSW and click on that big blue button. You'll then be redirected once all of the resources are gathered. And from there, I want you guys to click right where it says click here and you'll be redirected to the source site. From here, you just need to select your device. I have an iPhone, so I'm going to select iPhone. Next, this is very important. You need to actually select which device you have. I know personally that this is a global iPhone 10 model, so that's what I'm going to select right here. Nine times out of 10, if Apple is still signing the firmware and you're experiencing issues during the downgrade process, it's because you downloaded the wrong IPSW. So if you just don't know which one to click on, because there are a couple of different variants for each device, then definitely go up at the top where it says, identify my device. And you can follow these steps and enter your model number to help you know which version to download. So I already know, so I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go to iPhone 10 Global, and then I'm going to download iOS 13.2.3, the IPSW, so click on it, and then click where it says download. Remember how I told you guys that there are going to be a couple of ways that you'll know whether or not it's still being signed? Yeah, this is how. So this firmware will stay green so long as it is being signed. Firmwares that are no longer signed join the ranks of unsigned IPSWs and they turn red. As of now, as of recording, Apple is still signing 13.2.3. The window is very small. They're going to close it sooner rather than later. So do this ASAP. Now, once you navigate to it and download it, again, it will place it inside of your default downloads folder. So you need to know where that is. Uh, it's very simple for Mac OS. It just puts it inside of downloads and on Windows, it also puts it inside of downloads. But if you downloaded it somewhere else, then just know exactly where it is. Now, like I said, you need your device connected to your computer via a USB cable. On my Mac right here, this is the first time I'm connecting my device to my computer. So what I'm going to do is just click on trust on my Mac and then on my device, it will pop up with this little pop-up asking me to trust the connection. You'll receive the same thing on Windows inside of iTunes if it's the first time connecting. So tap on trust on your device and input your device's passcode and then you should have that that connection verified and like I said I want you guys to create a backup so this interface is basically the same inside of iTunes you need to navigate to the device tab for Mac OS if you're on Catalina you just need to click on it inside of finder in the side right here and just click on backup now now if you want things like your health data you also need to encrypt your local backup as well so check that box and input any password this is just encrypting your backup backup and it needs this encryption to save some of that more sensitive personal data from your device. So I recommend just doing something easy or something that you actually know. The only time you need this is when utilizing that backup. It really doesn't matter what it is. You can obviously remember the password in your keychain if you do have a Mac or just save the passcode in a note on your device because of course that is saved in iCloud and that's encrypted. So just make sure that you know that passcode if you do encrypt your local backup. I'm not going to do that and I already already have my device fully backed up, so I don't have to worry about it, but I highly recommend clicking where it says backup now and then waiting for that backup to complete prior to continuing. That is very important. Once that backup is finished, then you know beyond a shadow of a doubt if anything happens during the downgrade process, you'll have your personal information to go back to. Also note that you will not be able to use that personal information on iOS 13.2.3. You will not be able to restore from a backup created on iOS 13.3 on a lower firmware unless you modify it. I actually did a full-fledged in-depth tutorial on how to modify backups. I will have that linked in your cards now as well as down below in the description. And the one in the description contains the time code for that. It's actually had a downgrade from iOS 13.2 back to 13.1.3, but the steps are identical 
identical. So if you need to use that backup that you create locally, then you can refer back to that video for steps on how to modify your backup for both Windows and Mac OS. All right, and we're about to continue, but I really do quickly want to show you guys on this iPhone right here that this note and therefore my personal data will remain intact. This is my unjailbreak test note that I actually created during my unjailbreak tutorial for check range. So this is what the note looks like. Let's go ahead and exit now. And now we're going to proceed with this process. You need to actually hold down a key on your computer's keyboard. If you're on Windows, you're going to hold down the Shift key. If you're on Mac OS, you're going to hold down the Option or Alt key. So again, either Shift or Option slash Alt for Mac. It's only one key based on which operating system you're on. So I'm holding down Option or Alt because I'm on Mac. And now I want you guys to click on Check for Update toward the top, not Restore, check for update. And that should leave most of your data intact, especially if you have all of those iCloud settings checked that I talked about previously. And then you need to point it at your device's corresponding iOS 13.2.3 IPSW. Once you select it and you click open, click on update, the prompt that you receive, and then it's going to prepare your device for software update. But first it's going to ask you to input your device's passcode. This is just what you use to unlock your device. And it may take a second for that to appear as well. And once it does just input the passcode, and then it should proceed through the process. And it's going to do a number of verifications and checks to ensure that everything functions smoothly. So if you experience any hiccups after this point, again, that is because Apple is no longer signing iOS 13.2.3, although you should receive a kickback from Apple servers prior to that even. So I'm going to click continue here on this prompt that says to enter your device's passcode, and it's just going to go through the update or rather downgrade process. Remember, we are tricking it to essentially downgrade us back while also retaining the vast majority of our device's data. Now, there's really not going to be anything interesting going on inside of Finder. It's just going to have this little spinning wheel over on the left, and really the main progress for the downgrade is going to be on your device beneath the Apple logo, that restore bar, that's what you want to refer to. The same thing goes if you're on Windows. Um, really, the main and overall progress is going to be actually on the device itself. Definitely do not disconnect it. You will encounter issues and complications, and this is also one of the reasons why I had you guys create a full backup prior to this point, because if anything goes wrong whatsoever, it's always better to have that backup than to not have it. So this does take quite a bit of time. I'm actually going to come back once we are further along in the process. Okay, so there you can see that the Apple logo just disappeared. The screen went black. It's going to come back up and there's going to be another Apple logo with the progress bar beneath it. That's just going to be the on-device consolidation stage. So just wait for your device to come back up. At this point, you can unplug it, but it is not recommended. Uh, but it really doesn't matter if you do happen to unplug your device, just because again, this is the on-device consolidation step. So again, once more, we have an Apple logo progress bar beneath it it'll take some time not nearly as long as the actual downgrade process itself and once that's done you should be good to go and your device will come back up Okay, so you can see that the progress bar is now gone. We just have an Apple logo and it puts us right at our device's lock screen. So let's go ahead and swipe up and input our passcode here. And now when we go over inside of the settings application here, followed by general and then about, you'll notice that we now are on iOS 13.2.3. How epic is that? And also on our computer, on the device tab, when we navigate to it, it confirms that we are on 13.2.3 as well. So we did downgrade successfully. And just to show you guys that we have our data inside of notes, we have this exact same note that I showed you guys previously. If you encounter any sort of issues or data loss, like I said, definitely check down below in the description 
asking for information on how to use that backup that you created on a higher firmware on iOS 13.2.3. And now one last thing before we go, I wanna show you guys how to block OTA software updates because that's the last thing you want after going through all of this process to actually downgrade is for your device to inadvertently update or for you to mistakenly update it to iOS 13.3. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to do it. The same link, the very first one down below in the description where you downloaded the IPSW from, you'll be able to download the tvOS beta profile. That's what we need. So just navigate to that link inside of Mobile Safari. Has to be Mobile Safari, cannot be Chrome or anything else. And then just scroll all the way down to the download section and tap on the tvOS button there. And then it's just going to take a few seconds to gather the links and then you will be redirected. And once you are, just tap right where it says download for the tvOS profile and then it's going to put you on this page here and I want you guys to scroll all the way to the bottom once more and you're going to download the tvOS 12 version. Do not download tvOS 13. 12 is the one that blocks updates and then just tap through the prompts to download it and then followed by allow on the pop-up and then at this point you guys need to go inside of the settings application tap on profile downloaded followed by install and then input your device's passcode and once you do tap install to the consent followed by install again and then you just need to reboot so i'm going to restart right now and at that point, once your device comes back up, you will not have any available updates. And in fact, updates will not install automatically. The only thing you have to watch out for at that point is when you connect your device to your computer. So just remain vigilant of any and all pop-ups once you connect to your computer after you downgrade. So let's go ahead and unlock now that we are rebooted here and go inside of settings, followed by general software update. And now you can see that the update does not actually work. So it says that 13.2.3 is the latest version, whereas before I showed you guys, it said 13.3 is the latest version. That's because we broke it with the installation of that tvOS profile. So I really hope you guys like this tutorial. Stay tuned. I'll keep you guys fully in the loop for anything everything related to jailbreaking and also any new developments to come of those kernel vulnerabilities on iOS 13.2.3. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.